All right, so how would you like to learn how to create your very first WordPress plugin? If you have been looking for information that's gonna help you create it very easily, simple, and most importantly, you understand the hell out of what the hell is going on, make sure you watch this video because in here, I'm gonna share with you something that is gonna really truly help you create your very first WordPress plugin. So let's go. Okay, welcome to this training video series. And here I'm gonna teach you how to create a WordPress plugins. We're gonna be looking at two different WordPress plugins. One of them is just gonna be plain Jane that says hello world. And another one is going to be our video player in which a user can type in a URL and then we will take that URL and display it in a video player format. I uh, hope you're excited because I'm super excited about it. I cannot wait for you to start to apply some of the knowledge you're gonna learn here in your own WordPress development. Because when you have gained the skills after you go through this process, you're gonna be easily creating an amazing and very productive uh, WordPress plugins for your client who's gonna be paying you money. So let's get started. All right, so let's go over some of the files that we are going to be utilizing for this particular WordPress plugin, which is going to be Hello World. So what I did was I navigated down to the WordPress plugin directory. So if you go to your homepage of your WordPress install, you go to WP content and then plugins. And this is where all your plugins will be here. But for our first plugin we're going to be using this folder called my dash first dash plugin so in here we have three files so let's walk through them so the first file i put them in a chronological order in the way that wordpress uh, reads it or the way that we wanted to read it because it will all make sense to you because i like to keep things organized so the very first one is the information about the WordPress plugin that the actual WordPress looks for when they look at the WordPress plugin directory. And then the other two files are something that the plugin will utilize for its process. So I'm gonna open up the WordPress plugin file and let's walk through this. Let me zoom this in for you. So when you are creating your WordPress plugin, I just named it to be this in a chronological order. So 01, 02, 03. However, you can name this file to be whatever you want to call it. You can call it my WordPress plugin.php, long as it has a PHP extension, obviously, because WordPress is all based on PHP. So you can name the file whatever you want. However, in that main file, you need to have a certain uh, information that WordPress look for it. So for example, and all of this has to be commented out like in this structure. So let's walk through some of the things that WordPress is looking for in its WordPress plugin structure format. So the very first one is going to be the plugin name and it has to be in this format and then colon and then anything after that will be text, whatever you want to call it. In this case, we just called it my first WordPress plugin. And then the URI, which is your URL of the plugin. So you can put this your own website in here, or if you wanna put any other URL, you are more than welcome to put in here. All right, and then the next part is the, the description part. And in here, you can type in whatever you want between description part here. So in this case, what I did was I just typed in, this is my very first WordPress plugin. Just add the short code, which will be this on a page or a post. And then followed by the version number is typically industry standard. You started with the point one. So it's going to be one point dot zero dot blah, 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 blah. But if I were you, I would just start off with 1.0 and 
And if you want to have a substructure, so it could be 1.0.1, 1.0.2, 1.0.3, so on and so forth. And then your name will go in here under the author section. And then if you want to add author URL, that will go in here. So let's see what that looks like when you actually look at it on the front end side of the WordPress. So let's go over to our plugin section. So in here, let me just put this side by side. You can see it. So the very first one is the plugin name, which is my word, my first WordPress plugin, which is right here. And then you have the description, which is right over here. We just looked at it. And then within the description, underneath the description part here, you got the version number, which is this, by, which will be the URL, which is the name that I typed in here, my Mr. First plugin, and then the plugin URL. So this is the bare bone minimum that you need in order for you to create a WordPress plugin. So in the next video, we're gonna be looking at our function and client files. So I'll see you in the next video. All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go through the two of the files that is part of our WordPress plugin structure. So let's open up this file, which is the class file. If you are not familiar with how the PHP classes are work, pretty much how classes work is they essentially act like a function. So for example, this particular function has a name of auto, we'll just call this a hash. And within this function, we have this one string, which is alphabetic order and has number as well, and then some special characters. And then within this alphabetic thing, what it does, it combines this string and this string. And then also, it puts it in front of in here, and then this one is just making it random time, and then micro time, and unique time. Basically, the whole point of this particular function is to generate a random string of code, and that's all that it it is intended for. And after it has created, and it uses a, a function called hash within the PHP environment, which is available, and then all it's going to do is return it. And then the way that PHP classes work is you call this class and then within this class, you call this function. And that's what we're going to look at next. So let me save this up. I'm going to copy this and let's go over to our third file, which is, which is the client file. So in here, what we want to do is so our name of the class is my first plug in. And the reason why I'm teaching you this way is because within the WordPress framework, you cannot have same functions within the different plugin. Meaning, for example, if I call this a function auto hash in here and later down the road, let's say a week or two later, I have another client who wants to pay me money to create this particular function. And if I want to reuse this, I will have to call this auto hash one, auto hash two, so on and so forth, which is not a big deal if you're not creating a lot of plugins. However, as your plugins get more and more complicated, they tend to you will have to rename some of those same structures of your function just so they will work. Otherwise, when you have the same names of the function for different functions, it's gonna say, hey, this particular function name is already declared, you cannot use it. So, long story story, in order for you to use the same function name, you just wrap it around a class and then you basically change the name of this class and anything within it, it can remain the same and you can utilize the same functions like no problem. And that's one of the hacks that I have figured out where I can use the same function name and just wrap it in the, dump it in the class and I'm, life is good. So I don't have to change it. 
So in order for you to use this class, basically you just take the name and you just put it in here and then you put new in front of it and open close parenthesis. That's all. That's how you call a class. But before we even get to this, let's go to one step further or backward. There is a function within the WordPress plugin uh, structure. It is called add underscore shortcode. And basically what that does is it will take two parameters. It will take the shortcode that you want to utilize and then the name of the function that it will process the information in. So going back to our info plugin part of the file, we have said within this plugin, we're going to use this shortcode. And the way that you use shortcode is it starts with open bracket and whatever name string that you want to put in here and then close it by close bracket. That's all. So we are saying use this short code within this and go to our client side and then we're going to dump in here. So anytime that particular short code is added anywhere on your WordPress site, this function will fire off. That's all it's designed to do. And that is determined by this particular line of code. So let's walk through the function now. So as I was saying before, the my first plugin class, which is right here, the way we use it is we can just call it new, my plugin, my first plugin class, my first plugin, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, followed by semicolon. And we are going to assign that to a variable called func. And then later on, like in the for loop, we can use this variable called func and then use the dash and then greater than arrow and then we can call this function. That's how we get our function within the class. And then what we're doing now here is we're saying create a variable called string and then within this uh, string it says hello world and then couple of line breaks part of the HTML and then for loops and then within the for loop, it's going to loop through this 10 times. And it's going to say my first plugin. Well, I'll just change this to say uh, ID, just for giggles. And then line break, and that's that. And then after it has what went through the for loop, it's going to return it within the function and then wherever it has returned it, it's going to go back and replace it wherever this thing is called. So let's look at that live example, how that works. So let's go to our WordPress site and I'm going to activate this plugin. So it's activated and let's go to a page. Let's go here. Let's go to page. And then I have this page called DD. And then I, what I did was I just added this code called my WP plugin. Just make sure we go back in here. And what is this called? My WP plugin. And I literally just paste it in here. And then I could just update it. After it has been updated, I could just call it. I'll close this up right here. So here it is. So it says hello world ID 10 times starting with the zero front. So let's look at here side by side. Go back to client. So let's see how this works. So wherever this hello world is called, it's going to go, hey, add the string called hello world, and then loop through the for loop 10 times. So in this case, zero through nine, and show me and uh, add a auto ID, which is a random string, and then return it in here. So let's do one more thing while we're here. So I'm not uh, go here add a couple of line breaks and say new line and then what I'll do is I'll just copy this code again paste in here so what it will do is it will reproduce the same thing in here twice so update it let's go in here refresh it and like voila so here's the first time the function is called or sh short code is called then we have new line and then here we go. And that's pretty basic function is nothing special about it. However, in the next 
videos series that you're going to be going through it we're going to create a uh, function not a function rather a plugin that will give us a that will ask a user to put in url for a video and then we're going to display it on the front side so i'm really excited about this i hope you learned how to create a basic function in this video series so far and i'll see you in the next video Okay, so hope you really enjoyed this video. If you really did, I have this paid course that's gonna take you whatever you learn in this video one step further. If you are interested, make sure you click the link in the description to check out that course that's gonna help you create another WordPress plugin. Not just help you create it, but I will literally teach you the system that you can create multiple I mean multiple WordPress plugin. And then once you get really good at it, you can obviously go on and sell that thing. 